So while we're out here, uh, you notice that the perennial vegetation at the edge of the field, this is a farm field, but this is this is an edge, which ostensibly has got grass, but right in this area it has a lot of clover, and clover is in the family Fabaceae, which is uh, the legume family. And I think you we know, all know that this family is famous for being able to take nitrogen out of the air. It's one of the relatively few families of plants that has evolved to form a symbiosis with bacteria, which are able to take the nitrogen gas, which is very inert in the atmosphere, and break that triple bond in the nitrogen, the dinitrogen gas, and turn it into something that plants and animals can make protein out of. This is really a, one of the most important processes for life on Earth. Otherwise, uh, we couldn't exist. We wouldn't have any protein, any DNA, any of the compounds that contain nitrogen. And we're really dependent on these bacteria, and the bacteria take a lot of energy to do this. In fact, uh, about 100 years ago, humans learned how to do this in, in an industrial scale, and they do it by applying a lot of fossil fuel energy, uh, usually natural gas, and so it's fertilizer factories are usually where the oil and gas fields are. So I'm digging up this clover. You can see it's a tap-rooted plant. It's a dicot. I'm trying to shake a little bit of the soil off without losing all of the nodules. Now this is pretty early in the season. It's just coming out of winter. We're still in March. Uh, first day of spring was just a couple days ago. So it's just starting to get going, but it is greening up and growing a little bit, and so that means that the plant is taking solar energy, converting it into sugars. That's what the plant is good at, but the plant is not good at getting nitrogen. So it's got a symbiosis with these little microscopic bacteria that live in the soil, but the bacteria can use the nitrogen, but they are not very good at getting energy. They can't use sunlight. So they make a deal. All right, plant. You feed me sugar, give me the energy, and in return, I'll feed you nitrogen. In fact, the plant has a very complex communication with these bacteria to invite them into the root, and then the plant builds a house. And the house that the plant builds for the bacteria are these little white nodules that you can see here, the little white bumps, the growths on the root. These are actually part plant and part bacteria. So the plant has built a house, the bacteria are living in it. The bacteria actually, once they get going, are really not free living bacteria anymore, but they're bacteroids. They still have the genetics that produce the enzymes and the plant contributes to the home. And I just cut one open and let's get a shot of that. You see, my goodness, the plant looks like it's bleeding. You see the little red dot? I know that's small, but that's what you want to look at. Actually, it always sends chills up my spine when I think about this with the unity of all life. But you know, when you cut yourself, you bleed red, and you bleed red because you have hemoglobin in your blood. That's the compound that holds on to oxygen and takes it around to your cells. Well, the plant these plants in their nodules have exactly the same compound. It's hemoglobin, it's leg hemoglobin, and it has the same function. It holds on to oxygen, but in the, in the case of the, uh, the, the plant, it's holding on to that oxygen because this miracle enzyme, the nitrogenase, that makes, uh, that fixes the nitrogen from the, from the air, uh, is sensitive to oxygen. It would be destroyed by molecular oxygen, so the hemoglobin holds on to it. So this plant is going to be the greenest around. It, and this family of plants will have a big advantage that it can it can use its its trade with the bacteria to get nitrogen out of the air, out of the air in the soil. This is basically how human beings produce their food for millennia in, in early in agriculture up until the invention of fertilizer and the industrial process for doing this. Uh, we had to grow these legumes. Now, it was only recently that people knew that this was what was happening, but farmers had observed for many, many centuries that families in the plants in the, in the legume family uh, were able to enrich the soil for following crops. So if we grow another plant after, say, killing this clover, 
then the nitrogen that's in the clover would become available to the other plant. And that would be called a rotation. And that's really uh, how agriculture runs. It's still how organic agriculture runs primarily. Uh, the nitrogen gets into the system both in agriculture and in the forest. So there are trees that do this as well. They're in the same uh, family. Uh, it's a little bit early, but you're probably familiar with red buds and acacias, and uh, there, there are a number of trees that do this. So really important aspect of, uh, of soils, uh, something that takes place in that top layer, that A horizon. So.